everybody, it's your old pal Mike. I hope you're happy, healthy, and safe. And today I'm here with Guitar.com Live to answer some of your burning questions about offset guitars. We're talking mainly the Fender Jazzmaster and Jaguar. Now it's no secret that those are my two favorite guitars in the world. I really think Leo Fender absolutely knocked it out of the park with those two. But I can also admit that they're a little confusing and a little bit mm, different, especially when compared with, say, a Les Paul or a Telecaster. And for that reason, they can be a bit daunting when you're picking one up for the first time. In this video, I aim to demystify some of the more confusing aspects of these guitars so that the next time you encounter one, you'll know exactly what to do. Let's dig in. First question. What are the differences between the Jazzmaster and Jaguar? This is a great question because I know that the Jazzmaster and Jaguar can look similar to the untrained eye. However, they are very different guitars. The Jazzmaster possesses the full 25 and a half inch scale length that you might find on a Stratocaster or a Telecaster, and this translates to a fuller, bigger sound. Jazzmasters often have more top end snap and a wide ranging bottom end, more piano like sustain. The Jazzmaster has two wide flat pickups that are wound right to the edge of the bobbin, and these pickups have a very high fi frequency range. They get deep lows and very high highs, and that makes the guitar singularly versatile within the Fender catalog. The Jazzmaster also features dual rhythm and lead circuits, as well as the wonderful Fender Offset Vibrato, maybe my favorite feature of these guitars. The Jaguar is the Jazzmaster's younger and shorter sibling, coming in at a 24-inch scale length, which to my ear focuses the guitar a little bit more, makes it a little bit less bright. The Jaguar often has less sustain overall than the Jazzmaster, but that doesn't make it any less usable. In fact, it gives it a unique voice. And that unique voice is bolstered by the electronics package. The Jaguar features two single coils that are relatively the same as a Strat pickup. However, the pickups are surrounded by serrated metal claws that serve to focus the magnetic field of the pickups and also quiet it down considerably. Visually, the Jaguar stands out a bit from the Jazzmaster because of its metal plates, but the Jaguar also differs from the Jazzmaster in the lead circuit controls. We've got on-off switches for the neck and bridge pickups, as well as a bass cut switch that thins out the tone and makes it perfect for standing out during a lead. Rounding out the package on the lead circuit are the traditional volume and tone controls that you'll see on many other guitars, as well as the Fender Vibrato. Now, if you find yourself wondering which one of these guitars will work best for you, I encourage you to seek them both out, because while they are very different guitars, they are equally potent as music-making machines. Next question. What's the deal with the rhythm circuit? How does it work, and does it sound good? Believe me, I get this question all the time, because the rhythm circuit is still a big mystery for most people, but I'm here to help. Simply put, the rhythm circuit is a secondary set of tone controls on your guitar. When Leo Fender released the Jazzmaster in 1958, his original intention was for the rhythm circuit to be your main sound. With the switch flipped up, the neck pickup is engaged and run through a set of darker, rounder tone controls, producing a sound that you just can't get with the lead circuit. You'd use this sound for rhythmic chording and that kind of thing, but when it was time to take a lead and stand out from behind the band, you'd hit the switch into the down position, activating the lead circuit controls. That's the toggle switch, as well as the volume and tone controls that you might find on any other guitar. This produces a brighter, more cutting sound, and when you were finished with your lead, you'd hit the switch back into the upward position, activating the rhythm circuit and that rounder, smoother sound. If you haven't figured it out, this is literally the jazz in the Jazzmaster name. The rhythm circuit is one of my favorite features of the Jazzmaster and Jaguar. This sound is so wonderful to have at the ready, both on stage and in studio. For the sake of comparison, let's hear what it sounds like. <laughs>
Now, while the rhythm circuit was originally intended as a jazz sound, I have to admit that I'm terrible at jazz. I don't play jazz. So what do you even use it for? Well, there are so many things you can do with it. There is a veritable world of dark clarity available at your fingertips. Here's how I use it in a modern context. If you're after dark, clean clarity, this is for you. You can easily attain wonderfully round, somber tones just by flicking the switch at the top of your Jazz Master. And if you're like me and you love fuzz, then the rhythm circuit almost feels tailor-made for fuzz pedals. It can provoke some gargantuan sounds when paired with the right gear. And if you add a crazy octave pedal into the mix, the rhythm circuit starts to feel like one of the wildest synths you've ever heard. It's also worth noting that the rhythm circuit hails as one of Forrest White's many contributions to the Fender legacy. Forrest White was hired by Leo Fender as plant manager in 1954. However, a few years before, on a visit to the Fender factory, Forrest White showed Leo Fender a 10-string lap steel that he made with his father that featured this very circuit. Moving on. What was the thinking behind the bridge and tailpiece system, and is it true that it only works properly with heavy gauge flat wound strings? Yes, it's true that in the earliest days of the Fender Jazzmaster and Jaguar, flat wound strings were the norm, especially heavy gauges. With the Jazzmaster, Leo Fender was trying to capture the jazz market and create a solid body guitar with the string geometry of an arch top. Which is why, when you look at a Jazzmaster that's set up properly from the side, you can see that the strings flow from a tailpiece over a floating bridge and down an angled neck. These were all important parts of the design. And so, of course, these guitars were originally intended to wear 13 or 14 gauge flat wound strings. However, that doesn't mean that you can't get away with lighter round wound gauges. Although there's a caveat. When the guitars are set up as intended with a pitched back neck and a raised bridge, they generally work fine with string gauges from 11 up. You can absolutely get away with 10s, but it does take a little bit more work, especially if you're going to stick with the stock bridge. It wasn't until people started trying to put light gauge strings on these guitars that the old familiar complaints of the strings not staying in place and the bridge wobbling around came to be. But if you're going to swap out the bridge to a stay trim or a mastery, you can absolutely get away with 10 gauge strings. Still, for the best possible performance out of your Jazzmaster or Jaguar, it usually helps to step up a gauge. If you're using 10s, try 11s. Jaguar players may find that the short scale really goes well with a heavier string gauge. I use 11 to 50 on my Jazzmasters, but Jaguars, mm, 12s, 13s sometimes. All right, next question. Are Jazzmaster pickups P90s? And if not, what's the difference? What a good looking question. It's true that people get these two pickup types confused and I'm here to set the record straight. Now P90s, we all know them from Les Paul Juniors and Specials. They are formidable pickups with a great rock tone. P90s have coils wound tall and thick around adjustable screw pole pieces with bar magnets secured underneath. They have a healthy amount of output and a gruff mid-range focus personality that makes them hard to beat for loud rock and roll types. Now, Jazzmaster pickups are a bit different. They are a lot like if you took a Strat pickup and flattened it in a press. I actually happen to have one here with me, and you can see that it is both very wide and very flat. Their short pickups wound right to the edge around Alnico rod magnets, which is what you'd expect from most Fender pickups like a Strat or a Telecaster. Mids are slightly decreased as is overall output. However, they still retain that signature Fender sound. And because of the shape of them, well, they can be a little deeper and a little brighter than most other Fender pickups. The earliest Jazzmaster pickups are both louder and darker than those that came later. In 64, Fender changed the pickups for a brighter, lower output sound. Now, confusingly, Fender has opted to use real deal actual P90s in some of its current Jazzmaster offerings, most notably the Classic Player and Squire J Mascus. And I have one of those pickups right here, and you can see 
It's very different from an actual Jazzmaster pickup. The classic player NJ Mascus pickup has a hot, tall coil wound around threaded rod pull pieces with bar magnets secured underneath. This is a P90 through and through, but it fits under a Jazzmaster cover. Now, is this a problem? Not really. If you're looking for the Jazzmaster sound, yes, it may in fact be a problem because you probably won't quite get it from this pickup. However, I'm not knocking them. They just aren't Jazzmaster pickups. All right, next question. And this one seems tailor-made for me. The question is, what are some creative musical ways you can use the strings behind the bridge? And friends, this is my favorite part of these guitars. I don't think Leo Fender, bless his heart, had this in mind when he designed these guitars, but behind the bridge on your Jazzmaster or Jaguar exists an entire world of galactic weirdness that you can harness for whatever devious musical needs you have. It's undeniable that there are a myriad of ways to play the guitar as normal, but if you start experimenting behind the bridge, I promise you, you will never be bored. So, some fun things you can do for behind the bridge playing. Number one, you can just strum back there while you're playing normally, like so. Pretty fun, right? Another trick you can do with a Jazzmaster or Jaguar, if you're willing to mess with setup, action, and intonation, is that you can tune the notes behind the bridge to correspond or respond to things that you play on the fretboard. And this is one of my favorites. <laughs> Did you hear how certain notes jumped out? It's different on every one of my guitars. Some are set up for minor keys, some are set up for E or A major. It really depends on the geometry of your specific instrument, but I find that this sort of tonality opens up a world of possibilities, especially when it comes to things like texture. You can sort of emulate the sound of a chaotic cello or a didgeridoo if you have your guitar set up for it. That happens to be one of my favorite things to do, uh, especially live. Oh, I miss playing shows. Anyway, maybe that's something that interests you or excites you, and you can use it in your own songwriting. Another great sound you can make with the string length behind the bridge on a Jazzmaster or Jaguar is that you can actually manipulate them back here to emulate the sounds of, say, a pedal steel. If you're a country and western fan, this sound could come in handy for you, but it fits in a wide variety of musical situations. And really, all it comes down to is working on the technique to pull the string or push down, if that's more comfortable for you, up to another note from like a minor to a major or a major to a suspended, like so. Isn't that just nice? And if you're willing to put in the extra time and effort it takes to master that technique, then I think you'll find a lot to love. All right, next question. What's the best way to ensure your jazz master has a smooth and stable setup? Answering that question fully in a video of this length is tricky because there's a lot of foreknowledge and a lot of conceptual, um, let's say, challenging that goes on when it comes to jazz master and Jaguar setup. Uh, you can't simply approach them the same way that you would a Strat or a Tele. They are different beasts entirely. Now, as we said before, when you look at a Jazzmaster or Jaguar from the side, what you'll see is strings anchored to a tailpiece that flow over a high floating bridge and down an angled neck. And I would argue that the amount of neck pitchback on your Jaguar or Jazzmaster is integral to a proper setup. And if you keep that in mind when you're setting up these guitars, that the bridge needs to be raised a little bit and the neck needs a little bit of pitch back, 
then the whole system comes together. It really is impressive how many guitars come to me that won't stay in tune or don't quite sound all that good. And the minute that I use shims to pitch the neck back, I raise the bridge, and I install a set of strings that are 10 gauge or higher, the whole thing comes together like they really do respond to this kind of treatment. So if you're looking to get the most out of your Jaguar or Jazzmaster, please consider having it set up with Leo Fender's original intention in mind, because I guarantee you, every single time I have done this, and I have worked on so many of these over the years, the guitar is greatly improved just with a little bit of pitch back and raising the bridge. Makes a world of difference. It plays better, it sounds better, and it stays in tune better. All right, last question. Can you get a fat rock sound out of that thing or is it strictly for surf and spaghetti western soundtracks? <laughs> I love this question because friends, you can play anything on any guitar. There are literally no limits out there. If you want to play metal on a 335, you can, and I have, and it sounds great. When it comes to a Jazzmaster or Jaguar, there is a certain amount of stigma attached to them that they are only good for surf sounds, that you can only play spaghetti western soundtracks, and those are great sounds, don't get me wrong, but there is so much more that you can do with these guitars, like rock. <laughs> Metal. Blues. Indie. Country and Western. And yeah, even surf. But if you're thinking of adding one of these great guitars to your host of instruments, then please, do not be afraid to try different things with them. I mean, not every guitar always works all the time for every genre. That's to be expected, but you'd be surprised how versatile these guitars can be. And it's that versatility that makes the Jazzmaster my number one go-to guitar on stage or in studio. It really has to be a special set of circumstances for me to reach for anything else. All right, well that about wraps it up for me. I do hope this video has been illuminating and informative for those of you who are maybe curious about Leo Fender's most brilliant and misunderstood creations. As I said previously, I've been Mike for Guitar.com Live. Thank you so much for watching and please stay tuned for more content from the world's most online guitar show ever. Take care. <laughs>